We've tried the chicken factory. I'm still having nightmares about those giblets. We've tried beautician. It turns out a hot wax is not my friend. I'm running out of options for you here, Louisa. Please, I'll take anything. And this is new care and companionship for a disabled man. Do you have any experience of caregiving? Um, I've never done it, but I'm sure I could learn. Then that's going to be Will. Will. This is Louisa Clark. Nathan will talk you through Will's routines and equipment. You don't have to talk across me, Mother. My brain isn't paralyzed. Yet. Hi, welcome to What the Flick. My name is Christy. That is Alonzo. That is Matt. Alonzo is going to describe to us a movie called Me Before You, which came out last week, but we're playing catch up with it. Oh, ding. The ding. Um, so tell us, oh, ding, <laughs> Alonzo, it's your turn. Go. <laughs> All right, so Amelia Clark is a, a, she's a manic pixie dream girl. There's yes. no, really no other way to describe <laughs> it. And she gets a job as a caretaker for uh rich, uh, paralytic Sam Claflin, who may or may not want to go on living, and she may or may not want to change his mind about that. Take a look. Good morning. Oh, he hates me. Every time I speak, he looks at me like I'm stupid. To be fair, you are pretty stupid. Yeah, but he doesn't know that yet. <laughs> Interesting choice of footwear. What do you mean by that? That can't be from around here. Why not? This is the kind of place people come to when they got tired of actually living. I'm happy here. Yeah, well, you shouldn't be. You only get one life. It's actually your duty to live it as fully as possible. No, stay. Tell me something good. When I was little, my favorite outfit was my bumblebee tights. Bumblebee tights. Black and yellow stripes. Oh, dear God. Didn't you ever love anything that much? Yes. Loving can hurt. Please don't tell me you shaved off my eyebrows. Either one. Can I take you somewhere? <laughs> you are so going on a date with Will Trainer. It's too booby. Get the red dress out. We keep this love I don't want to go in yet. I just want to be a man who's been to a concert with a girl in a red dress. A few minutes more. Loving can heal. I promised my parents six months and that's what I've given them. But that was before me. I want him to live, but only if he wants to live. I can't just let this happen. You can't change who people are. I mean, what can you do? You love them. Wait for me to come home. Let's talk for a second about Amelia Clark's <laughs> eyebrows before we get into the actual <laughs> discussion of, of the movie itself. It's like a whole different movie. They have like, they're, they're doing the wave <laughs> independently of each other sometimes. She's adorable, and yes, she is totally British manic pixie dream girl. She and has these wacky little shoes. She is directed to like make her mouth as wide as possible when she is happy and when she is sad. Like she spends the entire right. movie with this crazy Joker rictus. So like, stop <laughs> doing that. Her shoe game is on point. She game on point, this. yes. And, uh, yeah, and there's a pair of yellow and black striped bumblebee tights, which yes. are a plot point, and I wonder, like, <laughs> if she can find these amazing butterfly dresses and floral shoes, like, why can't she find yeah, the tights? especially for somebody who is apparently the sole income earner for her family, because, right. you know, poor Mr. Bates is, is out of a job, right. and, uh, you know, from Downton Abbey, and it's like, wow, but you, the clothes budget is, right. you know... Right, girl can't find a work either. Exa right? yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly. where's the closet space in their little apartment to fit all her <laughs> dresses? Anyway, um, I digress. So this does what it needs to do for its target audience. We talk about this a lot. We talked about this with War. Warcraft. Does the movie do what it needs to do for the people it's aimed at? I would argue yes, for the most part, because it is romantic and they have lovely chemistry. No, I'm, I will say that. Now I'm going to disagree okay, with you on that. I think they have a nice push pull because he's like stoic and dry and sarcastic and she's perky in the face of any adversity and they melt each other, of course. That's and, how it's written, but I don't think that Claflin and Amelia Clark have any chemistry no? at all. And and look, I'm a sucker for a good tearjerker. I would have perfectly, I would have happily, like, you know, gotten out my handkerchief and done a little other side of the mountain here. <laughs> but I did. The two of them, she has more chemistry with the guy who plays his male nurse oh. than with <laughs> the, the Australian male nurse. <laughs> than with the lead in the movie. And so I is it his? Is it because of Sam Claflin? Is he doing something that doesn't work? I don't here? know. I don't know if it's her or him or just that they don't, you know, sometimes chemistry is just that they they're they're both individually great, but they don't bring it together. I them as a couple I didn't really buy. I didn't I wasn't invested in it. And uh, the one thing I will give this movie is that it takes the idea of end of life issues seriously, which a lot of movies don't, and, and they would like run screaming from that conversation as quickly as possible. It does take them seriously, but it kind of also handles it in a, in a clunky way. Oh, a little bit, but really shitty. Way. Yeah, but at least it, but at least it handles them. I mean, right. think about think about a mo <laughs> any movie where abortion is mentioned. Like right. it gives it's them not like an indie drama. Give them, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, 
just like, I shall give them 30 seconds and they'll be like, okay, we're not going to talk about that anymore. You know, like Juno is going to walk into the clinic and go, uh, mm, uh, mm, no, and then it's never going to come up again. This movie at least has the, the, the balls to, um, to at least address that those issues exist. Well, that's, you right, know, that's uh, the uh, story. Like that's the it, right. story. My, right? And the, my problem being that, like, for a tearjerker romance, I shouldn't leave talking about. Oh well, at least they handled the end of life Yay, issues. Yes. You know, that's <laughs> that should not be my takeaway. So you thought this was handled really poorly? It I, sounds like you know, there's a lot of backlash about this movie about the way it handles this because people are interpreting and the book too. It's based on a book. You know, there. This is a guy, uh, Claflin. His family like lives in the castle in yeah. this village. Like they're super rich. And he is super rich. He's handsome, and, he's smart, and, too rich. you know, the movie says, in spite of all that, you know, people are interpreting that the movie is saying, in spite of all that, he's still better off dead. And now there's other characters in the movie that don't agree. Well, and they talk but, about that he gets pneumonia a lot, that his immune right. system is deteriorating. It's not, right. it's not just like, oh, boo-hoo, I'm paralyzed, I'm going to die the now. Like, there's other that, issues there. You, you know, know and, and I... And I kind of see where people are coming from. And, and once I got started thinking about this, I couldn't get away from it. Like, that the idea that this guy is choosing to end his life and they're still trying to make it this tragic love story, like, it just doesn't fit that well. It'd be, you know, this would be a different level of tragedy and I think much more emotional if he had a terminal illness that nobody could control. But right. At the end of the, but, and, you know, it's, it's just weird and clunky. Like, and look, like, not to say, you know, I don't want to turn this review into a discussion about that because people have their own feelings on that. But it's just, this movie, I think, handles it in a clunky way. Well, and it kind of takes, it, for, for a movie that's basically, that's bar barely bothered to give us characters, to then have them plunge yeah. into this really deep philosophical gray right. area, it's like, well, you know, there's nobody there. Yeah, you're right. It's its eyes are bigger than its stomach I as far as that characters. goes. I think characters. I think, I think Amelia Clark and Sam Claflin are characters. Yeah, they're just types. They're types, you know. She she is the she's the adorable like you know girly girl with the with the shoes and everything. And he's I, I, there's a scene early on that I just I, I laughed out loud it, to show what a what a dashing like London stockbroker he is. He gets out of bed and like you know the the the, with the hot girlfriend next to him. And by the time he walks to the door, you realize that everything in his apartment is white except for the duvet. A surfboard and the bar stools, which are all exactly the same shade of yellow. But like he lives in a commercial. I will say though, <laughs> that establishes very efficiently who this guy is and what his right. life was like before. I like, guess, but already I was like, okay, I, I already don't believe you exist. You, you know? know what though? <laughs> he grew up in a castle. He was white <laughs> and green so. and austere. <laughs> There you go. Um, I didn't hate this movie, but mm. it is a little gooey and clunky. My number is a five point eight. I gave it a three and a half. I, you know, nice try, but uh, it just, it just doesn't work. Okay. I don't remember what I said. You said five point five. Yeah, five point five. It's fine. I mean, again, it's a lot of it's fine this week, but this one <laughs> it's okay. It's just like I, I found that the characters, I, I thought the characters were relatively real and had a little bit of, of kind of character journey in them, but it just. I, I felt like it was really clunky the way it dealt with the end of life issue. If you want to go with your girlfriend and cry, right? This is the movie to see. We we say take your grandma. Right. Don't take right. your grandma. To this. No, maybe but not. Take, take your <laughs> mom. Right, but this is <laughs> the sweetest friend. story you're going to find Daenerys Targaryen and Tywin Lannister in. Who are they? Bye. <laughs> <laughs>